Hello everyone, I'm Wafa and today this video will be covering a case on pelvic organ prolapse. We did do a similar one on pelvic organ prolapse as well, but uh, the case scenario was entirely different. It was an opposed menopausal woman, 55 years old, who had a previous history of vitreal prolapse. She tried the pessary, she had an awful experience with it, she then had to undergo a vaginal hysterectomy and now after a couple of years she came complaining of a bald prolapse. This time, would be doing a case in a woman in the reproductive age being diagnosed with a different type of prolapse and for the first time in her life, okay? So I do have two lovely volunteers, Audi and Sunita. Audi would be taking history, examining, explaining the diagnosis. Sunita would be then taking over, explaining the management plan and counselling the patient, okay? So let's come and see um, Audi. But before that, let me read out the scenario. So 34-year-old, so for Mills, referred by her GP with symptoms of gentle prolapse. That's all what you have in front of you. So let's come and see what Audi has to say. Hello, I'm Dr. Audi, one of the doctors in the clinic today. How may I call you? Sophie. May I confirm your age, Sophie? Uh, 34. Uh, Sophie, what do you do for a living? Mm -hmm. That's good. And uh, Sophia, I understand that you have been referred by your GP because of your problem from down below. Yes. Yeah. Today, do you have any other uh, concern and expectation from today's consultation? No, I'm just looking forward to a treatment for my problem. Sure. And before addressing your concern, will that be okay if I ask you a couple of questions to know more about? Yes. Okay, so we'll pause here. Um, this is the introduction part, and Audi, well done. You took 50 seconds. I was timing you, so that's perfect timing to do all of that introduction part at the beginning and then start taking history. So you, um, if you had listened to Audi, she had um, a proper introduction to the patient about her name, her role, and she even inquired about the patient's name and age, confirmed that that's the correct patient in the correct clinic. And then um, she talked about the purpose of the visit and she inquired if the patient had any concern. So Audi, you could uh, create a rapport with the patient and ask her, uh, how are you doing this morning or how are you doing today? That would be um, a very nice way in establishing, establishing that rapport with the patient, all right? And regarding um, confirming the aim of the visit, uh, I do have a slight comment on what you said. So usually, if you look at the screen, it's mentioned that a 34-year-old Sophie Mills referred by her GP with symptoms of gentle prolapse. So you would be wondering, um, let me just sit properly. Uh, so you would be wondering, what am I going to say to the patient, gentle prolapse, or what? Because she doesn't have, I don't have like a symptom in front of me that she's complaining of. So we can just say that, um, ask her, tell her that, for example, um, so um, I can see that you're referred by your GP, how can I help you today? And then she would tell you. The other way around, if you can see on the screen, is that if they tell you that referred by the GP with feeling of a lump or heaviness in her vagina, then that would be easy for you to translate into layman language for the patient. You can say, tell her, for example, that um, I have a letter from your, G from your GP saying that you've, you're complaining of heaviness or complaining of a lump down below whatever is written in the letter. That would be easy for you to confirm it that way. So you have two ways in which you can confirm the aim of a consultation. Just find the way that's more convenient to the scenario on what you have in the letter in front of you. Okay, um, so let's go to the rest of the history. Or sorry, the beginning of the history. Yeah, about your condition. Uh, since the last 10 years, I've been having a constant heaviness uh, down below. Uh, and it has become worse in the last few months. Uh, also, there is problem in my urine. There is um, uh, difficulty in passing, the, in starting the urine. And I frequently get constipated also. I'm so sorry you are going through a lot. And do you, do you feel any ma uh, lump down below? Uh, uh, I feel a heaviness below. Okay. And uh, uh, do you have any pain while uh, passing uh, your uh, water works? No. Uh, and uh, do you have any other discharge? No. And if you don't mind, are you in relation? Uh, yes, I'm staying with my husband. And uh, 
Sophie, do you have any problem with your sex? Uh, yes, I have. I get uh, difficulty in sex because of this uh, heaviness. Oh, I'm so sorry. And uh, do you have any other uh, cough uh, like that? Uh, yes, uh, doctor, I'm uh, asthmatic. Mm -hmm. Are you using any medications right now? on your tummy or down below? No. Is there any family concern uh, to be shared with me? No, they are all fine. Mm -hmm. Are you well supported at home? Yes. And if you don't mind, uh, do you smoke? Uh, yes, I smoke around 20 cigarettes a day. And uh, do you take alcohol? Do you take any recreational drugs? No. Have you ever felt down, depressed or loss of interest in the surroundings for the past four weeks? No. Thank you for sharing all the information. Have, is there anything else you want to share with me? No. Yeah. So we have... Okay, so let's stop here at the end of the history and then we'll come to examination. So, um... Odi, let's start with the good things that you do because there's a lot of good points that you did cover and then at the same time you do have some mistakes. So regarding the good things, I really like the fact that you had three open-ended questions. So I'm going to give you a heart for that. I have to give you a heart for this. Your first open-ended question was inquiring about her problem, inquiring about her peers and inquiring about her space. So that's really good. Having three in history, it's excellent. It's perfect. So keep doing that in every history for any case that you do even in other modules as well okay and i've also written here that you reacted to her complaint and also reacted to how it's affecting her sexual intercourse so i'm going to give you a heart again right so um that shows that you are listening to the patient and you're responding to her cues and what she's telling you um, the other thing that you did um, identify risk factors for the potential diagnosis, which is um, genital prolapse or pelvic organ prolapse. But what I realized is that you were not systematic, Odi, especially from when... Um, so let me tell you, you inquired about her problem, urinary symptoms, uh, vaginal discharge, sexual history, didn't sign pose before sexual history, until here you were okay, but then suddenly after sexual history, you went to risk factors for the prolapse. That should have been before sexual history. And then you went to um, allergies, and then you went to menstrual history. Allergies should be at the bottom, menstrual and sexual together right away after the presenting complaint and past obstetrical history. And then after that, you go into medical, surgical, and so on. So. It wasn't systematic at all, and that can really affect your marking history taking. I mean, these are marks that I think um, it's a waste to lose them because you already know what to ask about. You already know how to ask the questions, how to react appropriately. So please work on having a systematic way. So what I would advise is you can use what I've put here on the screen. Uh, as a general format and for every history it's the same steps you just sometimes eliminate some questions according to what type of history and what 
type of problem the patient has, okay? Um, why don't you ask about her last menstrual period? Yes, her periods are regular. She's on contraceptive, the combined contraceptive pill, but still she may be pregnant. Contraceptive pills are not 100% effective. So that's a huge part of um, patient safety. You're going to start with a treatment, maybe insert a pessary for her, and you don't know that if she's pregnant or not, all right? So, and you may even offer her surgery, and you may not know that she's pregnant. And then later on, when you do a pregnancy test, you find she's pregnant, then you tell her that you can't have surgery. All of that would just be um, a lot of dilemma that you don't need. So, a fixed rule any woman in the reproductive age, no matter um, what type of contraceptive she's using, unless of course she's sterilized, then you will be asking about um, LMP because there's no chance she'll be pregnant. But any other type of contraceptive, whether she's on it or not on it, you have to ask please about last menstrual period, all right? Um, I'm wondering why did you screen her for depression? I can't really figure out why you asked that question. In my opinion, it's not relevant at all. If she was pregnant, yeah, then yes, you would want to screen for depression at every visit, every encounter with the patient throughout the pregnancy. But apart from that, no need. Unless she has chronic pelvic pain that's affecting her life, she's leaking, okay? She's incontinent, either fecal incontinence or urinary incontinence. That can affect her life as well. If um, she's infertile, trying for many years for a baby, that can affect her um, emotional well-being and cause her to go into depression. Or if she has a previous history of depression. But apart from that, then no need to ask this question. It would just be a total waste of time, all right? And you'll be going out of the scope of a re relevant history. Um, what do I have else? So, yes. Um, yeah, that's it about um, history. So, Audi, I do think that you need to work a little bit more on your history. Just improve on, on the points that I gave you feedback on. Then you would be good to go. All right. So, let's go and see the examination. I would like to examine you in the presence of a chaperon with your permission. And the midwife will take the blood pressure and temperature and height weight ratio. And uh, we'd like to examine you on your tummy for any other swellings and also down below to see whether there is there are any swellings from down below and uh, also is there any discharge if at all it is there we may need to offer you some swabs to be taken to make sure that there is no infection and also we'll see whether they, you are leaking or coughing uh, and also whenever it's sneezing and will that be okay okay yeah and uh, thank you for sharing all the information so Okay, so this is the end of Audi's uh, presentation. Um, so Audi, in examination, you, you took too much time. Okay, that's number one. And you mentioned a lot of information. Why would you want to examine a patient with prolapse and no urinary symptoms for stress urinary incontinence and leaking? You would not want to do that. All right, so simplify it and just say, like you said, Okay, in a few minutes, in the presence of a, mid of a nurse chaperone, sorry, a nurse chaperone, um, the nurse would be um, taking your blood pressure, pulse, and uh, your BMI as well. And then I'll just be having a feel of your tummy. And also, I would want to examine you vaginally, insert a speculum, the same one that you use for your smear test, just to see where the heaviness is coming from. If I do find a vaginal disjoint, then I may need to take swabs just to make sure that there's no infection. Is that okay? She would tell you yes. As simple as that, okay? Simplify your examination, please. All of you simplify your examination. I did, I did mention this comment in the previous video on the pelvic organ prolapse because the previous candidate did the same thing. So I hope all of you would listen to my advice and apply it in your practice, okay? Simplify, always simplify. And um, Audi, you didn't um, explain the diagnosis I don't I think you you forgot to explain it so uh, Sunita would be explaining the management plan so I'll just explain the diagnosis so everything can flow in order so in a moment like this you can tell her that uh, what's her name yeah so Sophie from um, the information I gathered from you and from examining you what you have is what we call pelvic organ prolapse. Have you heard about this before? No, I haven't. So basically, um, a woman's pelvis is made out of a group of muscles that 
uphold the pelvic organs like the womb and the bladder, the rectum, into its natural position. And sometimes with this, these muscles get overstretched and weakened and cause these organs to drop down into the vagina and causing the heaviness. Um, in your case, what I found when I examined you is that your bladder is dropping down into the front wall of your vagina or the, the, the upper wall and your bowel rectum is uh, dropping down as well into the uh, bottom uh, wall of your vagina. Right, that's why you're feeling the happiness. This is how you explain it to her, okay? Uh, you don't need to talk about you trying prolapse and all of that. She just has sister seal and rectus seal, and you can tell her at the end that we usually stage uh, this pro these prolapses um, according to how far they're dropping down. In your case, it's in between, it's stage two. So we can easily manage it with various options that we can start with. She'll tell you, okay. So this is how you explain it. Um, I don't have any um, comments here. Okay, what? Let, let me just open the correct presentation. I think I opened the wrong one. Okay. So let's go now to Sunita and see what she has. So I'll just recap the positive points in the history which are available on the screen right now. She has heaviness in the vagina, hesitancy, and hesitancy usually caused by uh, the sister seal. All right. She has constipation, so that's a risk factor you can work on. She smokes 20 cigarettes a day, that's another risk factor you can work on. And she works in a care of the elderly ward and her duties entail helping patients move. So she's practically lifting heavy objects. So these are three points that you can work on for her symptoms. She's para one, she has a forceps delivery, so that could kind of explain why she has a pelvic organ prolapse in addition to uh, the constipation and uh, what she's doing. So if she asks you, why did I have it, relate it to these three, that these three cause weakening of the pelvic muscle, so the organs would drop down. She's allergic to latex and penicillin, so that's a positive point you would use in your management plan to cover patient safety. BMI 26.4 normal. She has stage 2 sister seal and rectal seal. So let's come and see what Sunita has. And the patient will be asking her two questions. What are my options? And when she talks about the options, she would ask her, can't I have surgery right now? Okay, so let's start. Sophie, I'm going to explain the management options available for your condition. So please feel free to stop me if you want me to clarify anything. I would be happy to explain you again. So Sophie, first of all, I would like to send a urine test to check for the infection and uh, blood in your urine because you have problem with your water work. Uh, then for treatment option, first of all, we will offer you uh, pelvic um, uh, lifestyle modification and uh, supervised pelvic floor muscle training. So in lifestyle modification, I would suggest you to maintain a healthy uh, weight to your height and stop smoking for which I can refer you to um, uh, NHS stop smoking services and avoid constipation for which I can uh, I would suggest you to have a, lots of water um, high fiber diet which includes plenty of fresh fruits vegetables high fiber uh, uh, whole grain bread cereals and even I can prescribe you medication so that uh, you can avoid streaming when you are opening your power. Then, um, along with this lifestyle modification, I will offer you a supervised pelvic floor muscle training, uh, which is uh, pelvic floor muscles are, are a group of muscles which uh, wrapped, un wrapped under side of the uh, bladder and the back passage. To strengthen pelvic floor muscles, you have to sit 
comfortably on a chair with your knees slightly apart. Then you have to squeeze your pelvic floor muscles like you are trying to hold the urine and uh, hold it for 10 seconds and release. You have to do 8 repetitions uh, in one set and you can repeat 3 sets in a day. To learn these pelvic floor muscles, I will refer you to a specialist physiotherapy so that uh, you can have a supervised pelvic floor muscle training. Usually, this is recommended for 16 weeks. If you have relief, you can continue further. If you do not have relief, then we will offer you pessaries. Vaginal uh, pessaries. Uh, pessary is a device which is, is uh, vaginal pessary is a device which is inserted into the bell, into the vagina uh, to uh, hold the prolapse back. Um, the, uh, this, uh, these pessaries are usually made of either latex or silicone because you have latex allergy we will offer you a silicone one and uh, uh, this will be put by a trained personnel and uh, more than one pessary fitting may be needed to find a suitable pessary and uh, you may have some vaginal discharge, bleeding or mild discomfort during sexual intercourse and there is a small risk of infection also and uh, to Avoid serious complications. You need to change your pessary every six, at least every six months. Uh, do you have any question? Am I clear so far? So, for surgical option, uh, because uh, you have a plan for future pregnancies we will uh, uh, we will uh, delay the surgery till uh, you are very sure uh, till you complete your family because uh, uh, if you get pregnant after surgery the, your prolapse may recur so once you are uh, uh, once you are uh, sure that you do not want future pregnancy and uh, even after lifestyle modification, pelvic floor exercises or passive, you are uh, uh, your symptoms are not relieved, then we can think about surgical options. Am I clear so far? Do you have any question? Okay, so this is a patient information leaflet. Uh, you, uh, whatever I explain is written here, you can go and read it. And then I will write back to your uh, physiotherapist, dietitian, and your GP. And I will fix an appointment with my consultant also and uh, provide you a uh, contact detail of some support group. Thank you. Oh. Hello. Okay, so let me shut this off so it doesn't go on on its own. Uh, yeah, sorry, I just want to just write the point here. Uh, okay, Senator, well done. Um, you covered the management options. They, they were correct in sequence. You covered them all. Um, you used patient-friendly language. You didn't pick up a single medical jargon. You gave her the information in chunks, but then when you started with lifestyle changes, smoking, constipation, and all of that, you then um, didn't pause and then go to the pessary. Right away you went to the pessary, ask her, am I clear so far? Do you have any questions? And then you go on to the pessary, okay? And, and instead of just going one row, because the patient can then um, stop you or when you ask her, do you have any question before you go on to the press, she can ask you about surgery and there would be marks on it. So you covering all the surgery part beforehand because you can't guarantee that you would run out of time. That would um, give you the marks on surgery. But if you don't open for her that door, 
uh, to ask questions and you just go and continue to talk about the pessary, you may not be able to talk about surgery because you can't guarantee that you will finish in the 10 minutes. So I always advise and always say to my students that inviting questions will help you a lot in the exam because it's all about the patient, what the patient wants, what the patient wants to ask and you answering back. It's not about you giving her all the guideline on pelvic organ prolapse management, right? Um, okay, so let's come to the points. Um, okay, you wanted to do a urine test because she has hesitancy. I can understand that. But just tell her, just um, examine your urine to see if you have any infections. That's it. No we need to mention blood. Blood, you can ask her in the history if you want to. Do you have any blood in your urine? Okay, but no need to justify it in examination. Uh, you did talk about the management options. I wrote here, you talked about um, maintaining a healthy BMI, so her BMI is good, stopping smoking, constipation, but try and justify why are you offering her that? She smokes 20 cigarettes a day. Do you think she would listen to you and you tell her that stop smoking without telling her what would be the benefit of stopping smoking on her symptoms? She won't listen to you. She'll just go and throw away that leaflet. So explain and justify how the options that you give would help in managing her symptoms. Um, so when you come and talk about um, stopping smoking, you can tell her that uh, when I, could, I realized that, or not realized, because you didn't realize actually she told you, you can tell her that. Um, so you told me that you smoke 20 cigarettes a day. Smoking can put you at risk of having cough regularly and whenever you cough you put strain on your pelvic muscles that can weaken them more and um, cause causes the bulge to worsen or even come back after it gets treated so what I would advise is that you how about that you stop smoking what do you think we do have help available we actually have the NHS stop smoking service you can contact them if you want and I'll be giving you the leaflet at the end how does that sound she will tell you yes and then you go on to the she has constipation right so in constipation you talked about a lot giving her medications and all of that you don't need to mention that just tell her for the constipation eat a healthy diet food of vegetables really leaves fibers a lot drink plenty of water so you can prevent it from happening and whenever you have constipation go to your GP to get it treated Early because constipation, when you're straining, it puts um, that extra pressure on the pelvic muscles and weakens them more. Also, pelvic floor exercise, you explained it in a very uh, nice way. I loved it a lot, so that's why I'm going to give you another heart. And um, you can tell her that all of these measures, we can work on them and there would be a high chance for, for your symptoms to be relieved right you then went to the sorry for the pelvic floor exercises you mentioned it for 16 weeks well done according to the guideline but you didn't address her occupation she lifts she doesn't lift but um, she works in an elderly care home and she helps patients move around um, some of these patients can be really heavy and uh, it would be like carrying extra weight okay uh, so that is something that you can work on and you can tell her that um, I would advise you not to lift heavy objects and uh, from what you told me your job entitles you to um, help patients around that's a good thing that you're doing and I do respect it a lot but it would worsen your symptoms more and it actually can be a reason why you're having your symptoms now so if you want us uh, we can write to your employer about your condition and you can be doing other things than assisting patients around okay so this is how you come up with a solution and when you came to the pessary you mentioned what it is what it does uh, trial and error and most importantly you told her that you will not use latex will use silicone because you're allergic to latex you told her it's a trial and error yeah I mentioned that you talked about the risks and you talked about importance of follow-up to avoid um, complications so well done suit I really love the part of um, the pessary and when you talked about surgery well done you said it's not recommended but I've written here I was writing here you said that we will delay surgery to complete your family 
Um, it sounds like you're telling the patient, no, you'll not have surgery right now. You didn't mean that, but it does give that impression. And patients have the right to choose what she wants. She can have the right to say, I want surgery, and she will have it. Uh, as long as she knows the risk of it coming back again if she gets pregnant. So in another, another way um, to phrase it, you can tell her that, um, yes, surgery is an option, uh, but we usually advise it to be done for women who have completed their families. Uh, the reason being is that if you do get pregnant again, there's a risk that uh, with pregnancy hormones and the delivery, the vaginal delivery, it would weaken your muscle and your prolapse will come back again. And having a repeat surgery would be quite difficult because of the scar tissue from the previous one. At the same time, it may not be as successful as the first one. So that's why we advise it to be done later on. So okay, you explain it to her fully. If she says, okay then, all right, start with the pessary. All right, and the lifestyle change. If she says, no, 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 I want surgery then, she will have it, you can't tell her no. Right. Um, at the end, uh, so you do mention a long list of people are going to write back, write to. You will not be writing back then. You'll just be writing back to the GP. The GP would then be doing the referrals for the physiotherapist, for the dietitian. All right. So just say right back to your GP about um, our management plan. Okay. Um, and you gave her a leaflet at the end. So well done, um, Sunita. Oh. Sorry, I tend to forget some points in between. You have to mention what type of pessary that you would use. He's sexually active, just a two prolapse, a ring pessary. Tell that's the commonest type we use, and um, it's comfortable. It won't interfere with your sexual intercourse, okay? And it's easy to remove and insert on your own. Uh, so you can see now how different it is to counsel a woman in a productive age who has a prolapse on the management plan, in which we'll be focusing about lifestyle changes and pessary, and then recommending, if she asks about surgery, recommending it to be done at the end. Even if she doesn't ask about it, if you do have a few seconds, use them and just give her a few sentences about uh, surgery, that it is an option, but you don't recommend them. You can tell her that uh, for the surgery, we'd usually um, do it vaginally to tighten um, the upper wall and uh, the lower wall of your vagina, all right, to fix things back into its place. But we usually don't recommend it uh, right now because of this, 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 and this. Okay, so you just say it at the end, just to show the examiner that you do know these are the management options, and for the patient as well to know that yes, there's an option like this, but she's not suitable for it. Okay, um, so. Yes, I remember, I did explain the diagnosis, right? So for the treatment plan, um, Sunita, I, I liked what you said, but I would want it to be more uh, simpler, more fr patient friendly, more interacting, okay? Use um, phrases that are more natural instead of giving that feeling that you're just saying what's written on a leaflet or on a guideline, okay? Um, so, okay, just let me the screen so what you can say is to the patient that um, there are ways um, through which we can tackle this uh, there are things that you can do things that uh, we can provide you with so things that you can do and work on is um, stop smoking if if you can because smoking causes you to have a cough cough or put strain on your muscles that would um, weaken them and um, if you do want to help with stop smoking, we do have, and then you mentioned what I mentioned about the NHS smoking referral and give her a leaflet. Also, did she have constipation? Let me look at this scenario here because I tend to forget, yes. Also, for constipation, eat a healthy diet because this it puts a strain on your muscles down there, weakens them, and whenever you get constipated, go to the GP to get it treated early. Then you talk to her about your occupation and about the pelvic floor exercises. Most of the women know pelvic floor exercise. You can say that we do have an option of doing pelvic floor exercise. Have you heard about them before? Yes, they are the Kegel exercises. Um, so you simply do them to strengthen the muscle that could put everything back into place. And also when you continue doing them, and even if you get surgery later on or you have a pessary inserted, it would prevent the prolapse from coming back again 
after surgery. And we advise that you continue doing them and after each, each delivery, you do it as well. Um, yes, yeah, she doesn't have any other risk factors, so it's the job. And then you can tell her that the other option is a pessary. Have you heard about it before? And explain it to her. So it's um, a device that just looks like a ring. So it's approximately this size. We do have different sizes and shapes. What we use is the ring one because it's the commonly used, most comfortable, especially for sexually um, active young women because it doesn't interfere with sex much. Um, so it would just be inserted in, in the clinic. In a few seconds, inserted. And what it does is that it supports the the bulges on the upper wall and the lower wall back into its place, relieving all of your symptoms. Um, it's quite good in relieving this condition and it, you would be relieved as long as it's there. So it, it's not something permanent that you would insert and then remove and then guarantee that you won't have the bulge back again. All right. Um, it's a trial and error. We, would, we may need to do a couple of fittings to see what size is comfortable for you that doesn't fall and at the same time doesn't uh, bother you much and it does have risk associated it can sometimes drop into the vagina and cause a raw area what we call an ulcer that can bleed you can have infections and um, what else I tend to forget things infections and uh, okay yeah that's it so in order to prevent these um, complications we would advise you to come in for follow-up so this is how you cover the pessary, as simple as that. Please don't complicate things and don't give much information and follow what Sunita said because she explained it nicely. So you can tell her that, um, so I've given you lots of information here, uh, Sophie. So what do you think about our plan? She told me, can't I have surgery? Then you talk to her about, yes, it's an option and why you don't recommend it. Don't tell her you can't have it because she can have it. Just why you don't recommend it and what are the risks associated with it I tell her it's your choice at the end what you want so how about we work on these for the time being on the smoking on the on the um sorry the smoking uh, your job and um the constipation and you can do the exercises as well if you do want to have the person who said right now you can have it or if you want to wait to see the effect of the exercise you can wait and see if the exercises are working well with you, then you can continue doing them. So all of these, if you maintain all of these, in addition to maintaining a healthy weight, that would uh, negate the need for having a surgery later on. Right? And then you just um, end up the consultation, wrap it up, give a summary if you want, I'm going to write back to the GP, here's a leaflet, and then that's it. All right, so I hope um, Audi and Sunita, you benefited from the feedback. Please go and practice the, the points I've mentioned to you and apply them to another case because um, the feedback that I gave is not just specific to this scenario. Um, it's generally about your counselling skills, so apply them to every counselling station that you do. All right, and I, for all of you, I do have a summary from the NICE guideline, an audio one only, it's not a video one, for the Euro Gynecology and Pelvic Organ Prolapse, sorry, Incontinence and Pelvic Organ Prolapse. If you want to go and listen to it and instead of going through the whole guideline, uh, below on the description, I do have the links for the website. So click on the website, go to free sessions, you would find the recordings in addition to other free sessions that we did. All right, so... Thank you, Audio and Sunita. I hope all of you um, enjoyed uh, the video. If you did enjoy, just click on a like and write a comment if you want to. If you have any questions, feel free to write them down in the comment and I'll be answering you back. All right? Goodbye. Thank you very much, all of you.